The picking aisles, where sorted stock is held prior to ordering Ben Quinton inside the package was a used Queer as Folk box set, each of the pre-owned discs carefully checked to ensure they were scratch-free and ready to play as soon as the delivery reached its new owner. The destination? Vatican City. Not every item that makes its way through Music Magpie, the world's biggest reseller of physical media, is quite so politically charged. Its bread and butter are albums of a bygone era. Never mind, Queen's greatest hits and thriller are some of the most common titles held across the company's 16,500 square meters of warehouse space in Stockport and Macclesfield. Old releases from game franchises such as FIFA, Call of Duty and Grand Theft Auto are another staple. As soon as the latest title is released, people rush to box up and sell off their old games, along with other discs cluttering up their homes. This is how the company builds its vast and ever-changing store of used items. The feed line of the media sortation machine, which separates DVDs from games Ben Quinton the song identifying Facebook group is better than Shazam every month, Music Magpie sells 2 million of these pre-owned items and buys in another 2 million to replace them. In 2017, it started buying pre-owned books, it now receives 10,000 every day, chief among them, 50 shades of grey. The company has turned reselling old games and CDs into an industrial-scale operation, but co-founder and CEO Steve Oliver knows that the industry's days are numbered. The market for new physical entertainment is in decline, he says. The future of this business is inevitably not in physical media. Even so, there is still plenty of money to be made. In the 2017-2018 financial year, Music Magpie sold an estimated £125 million worth of used goods, an increase of almost 26% from the previous year. On both Amazon and eBay, where the company does most of its business, Music Magpie has racked up more transactions than any other seller. At the time of writing, it had over 1 million items listed on its eBay store alone. Cages of unsorted DVDs and games Ben Quinton music industry veteran Oliver founded the company with old Stockport friend and fellow former workmate at High Street Retailer Music Zone, Walter Gleason, in late 2007, just as the financial crisis started to take hold in the UK. The recession was hitting, there was the run on Northern Rock Bank, Money Saving Expert, .com founder, Martin Lewis was writing stories about ways for consumers to save cash and raise money, he recalls. The best alternative summer festivals in the UK and Europe setting up in Oliver's garage in a Stockport suburb, the purse started by offering people money up front for selling their old CDs online. We started to understand the power and additional margin that is available in used product as compared to new product, he says. Now the retailer buys tens of thousands of items every day, topping up the company's constantly shifting stock of 650,000 CD, DVD, game and book titles. For half of those items, it holds just a single copy at any time. That item is then simultaneously listed across more than a dozen Amazon and eBay stores in different countries, as well as the company's own online store. This razor-thin stock margin is maintained by an algorithm that sets prices by analyzing the rate at which an item is sold, its cost and what it sells for on other platforms. It also takes into account other factors that might bump up the price, such as an artist's upcoming release. Before being sent out, CDs, DVDs and games go through the wrapping machine. This applies a plastic film, for that, as news dealing Ben Quinton the result. Big profits. At the time of writing, for instance, Music Magpie would buy a used CD of Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon for 46 pence and sell it for 11 pounds and 31 pence. The very first CD Music Magpie ever sold, ABBA Gold, Greatest Hits, is still its biggest seller. The retailer buys in used copies for 35 pence each and sells them on its Amazon store for £6.95. Making a good margin on the classics is critical, since Music Magpie accepts everything sellers send. For every dark side of the moon, it'll also receive a copy of Here's Ease Pop Stars. 
about 10% of what we buy now goes straight in the recycling bin, it's just the cost of acquisition for us, Oliver says. Since the cost per unit is so low, most people send in bulk 60 or more items at a time, when they're having a big clear out. Childish Gambino and How the Internet Killed the Cultural Critic The company's warehouses are crammed with repurposed nappy boxes full of old DVDs. Oliver calls it the lazy person's eBay model. Sellers make a fraction of what they could earn from selling directly on Amazon or eBay, but they benefit from the convenience of getting rid of everything in one go. Since Music Magpie then sells these items en masse, it can squeeze out more profit per item by securing discounts on postage and automating parts of the packing process. Company also has a deal with the UK budget retailer Poundland, through which it sells 200,000 refurbished discs. Lady Gaga's The Fame Monster is the most sold CD through this deal. At the time of writing, selling the CD to Music Magpie would net you just 11 pence. The sortation machine stacks groups of media so they can be placed in barcoded trays. This means they can be located in the picking aisles as well as on the stock database Ben Quinton but the market is waning, so Oliver is looking beyond physical media. In 2014, the company started reselling pre-owned mobile phones and other devices, now phone sales make up almost 50% of Music Magpie's entire revenue. A small team of phone technicians refurbish every device they receive, replacing the battery and screen if necessary, before reboxing and reselling it in the UK and abroad. In early 2014, the company launched a similar service in the US, now called Declutter, that is already a third as large as the UK business. For the last decade, Music Magpie's success has been built on the back of eBay and Amazon. It was only three years ago that the company started to carve out a space for itself by selling under its own name on the platforms. Until then, it separated its buying and selling brands, calling itself Zoverstocks on Amazon and Estix on eBay. The platforms bring Music Magpie a huge audience, but in exchange they take a cut of each sale, and, just as importantly, retain all the brand recognition. Despite the name change, many of Music Magpie's customers won't even know who they're shopping with. That's why Oliver's next challenge is to loosen his ties to the big platforms and get more people buying from Music Magpie's own online store, which currently accounts for only a small fraction of the company's sales. It might seem like a hopeless task, but Oliver is betting that 10 years of turning old CDs and DVDs into cash will count for something in customers' minds. It's all about trust, and people do trust us. Even in Vatican City, apparently.